Hey guys, what's cracking? In this video, I'm going to be talking about how I made over $300,000 in 20 days and I'm going to be going through the product that I sold, how I scaled it and everything which I think is really important for you to understand and you know, hopefully go out there and crush it as well. So without any further ado, let's get right into the video. So how I made over $300,444 in 20 days and I'm going to be revealing to you guys the product. So today I'm going to go through, um, firstly what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys the proof of revenue inside my Shopify dashboard so that you know that I'm not like I'm just making up those numbers. And then I'm going to be going through the product and what's the product that actually did over $300,000 in 20 days. I'm going to be talking about the marketing angle and how I created this um, unique marketing angle which you know helped me sell over like thousands and thousands of units. The Facebook ad strategy. And I'll be explaining why the product sold so well and the mindset shift overall which helped me and just like you know what I learned. Alright, so going into my Shopify dashboard. So as you can see right now, here's, here are the sales today, but that's not important. I'm going to be showing you guys the date from December 1 to December 20, which is when I did this, Um, which I, yeah, I decided. Alright, <laughs> so, to one, let's go down. Oh my god. Try one more time. Try one more time. Yep. Yep. So as you can see right here, um, it's um from first December to twentieth December, it's um uh, ten thousand. I'm gonna refresh. I yeah, I think because by refreshing, you know, it shows that it's not fake or something. I I think I think that's how it works, right? Um. Yeah. So gonna go and, oops, one two. <laughs> wow. This is, okay. So 21, yep, so the numbers are still the same, all right, so this is a proof. So the the overall margins in this, um, in this like um, total amount of sales, I believe it was around 13 to 15% after like every single spend, so after my transaction fees, um, we found disputes and everything, it was around 13 to 15%, so it wasn't that bad. So this is the product that I that made me over ten thousand in just twenty days, and it's um called the flying fairy doll. I'm sure some of you guys probably seen this before already. And anyway, you know, I found this product actually on Thief.co, and it's a product research website that shows you different kind of products. So what happened was, you know, I found a product and I was like, wow, this product is quite interesting. And it was the fourth quarter, so I was thinking like, right now is a time where people are kind of like buying gifts for their, you know, like daughter, for their son. And I was like, okay, cool, this might be a good product to sell because, you know, parents can buy it for their sons and daughter, for most of them, probably like their daughter. And I tested it with a video on Facebook ads and I launched it around, I think it ran like the start of November and I started testing it. And I remember, I remember the first day of testing, you know, I had over like um, five rows and that's when I kind of knew like, wow, this product could be a real, real like potential winner. And then I just let it like run for two more days. I waited for around like one or two days. Then it got me like five to six rows again. So I was like, this product is, is definitely a winner. And I, and I just um, increased the budget and I, I didn't increase the budget. I actually duplicated in the new ad set and I increased the budget of the new ad set. So I was just duplicating all those assets that was working and you know, overall people just went crazy over this product. So the marketing angle of this product. So how I created like my video was, you know, I was, the intention was to sell towards um, parents who had a daughter. Because I feel like this is a product that most um, girls would like and not um, boys. So in, a, in my video and my ad copy, I was like kind of just um, pointing out towards um, parents who had a daughter. So, you know, so I remember like my first, my video copy was something like, you know, does your daughter love dolls for like the first um, scene. And then the ad copy and the product page copy was optimized with that in mind. So I was like, I had the idea that, okay, this product, I'm going to sell it to parents who had a daughter. So the ad copy, um, not really the ad copy, more of like the video copy and the product page copy, I was... In my head, I was like, okay, I'm gonna, this is gonna be for a um, balance with a do daughter. And that's how I crafted my entire uh, marketing message on. So video started out by calling our parents by saying, you know, does your daughter love dolls? And you know, people, and most parents, if, if they have a daughter, they'll be like, oh yeah, you know, that's me, my daughter loves dolls. And the funny thing is, you know, grandparents were actually buying as well. So I remember, I, I, I think I had a lot of customers. I, I would say like probably like more than like 30% of my customers are actually like, um, really, um, I like grandparents, so like probably around like fifty to like above fifty to like sixty years old, and I upsell them with the same fairy doll plus other similar fairy dolls, and 
I was also upselling them like some different like flying kind of dolls that wasn't like a fairy. So it was like this a like, UFO thing that was like flying and this like flying helicopter as well. So we ended up selling two colors and the very good thing about this price you now we had like a $28 margin. So with such like a big uh, margin, such a big fat margin, I was able to sell many units of this while keeping like um while i mean i was able to scale this without worrying too much about the ad cost because you know i remember like the ad cost like when i was starting it the early ad cost was around like 10 to 15 dollars like um cpa and that's really really good for me but when i started scaling it's, it got up to like 20 25 or sometimes even 30. but the uh, cool thing is because like most customers they bought more than one and the average order value was way over the 50. i was still able to be profitable even though you know my um cost per sale was more than my margin which was like you know 20 dollars and i would bring out 20 or 30 dollars and that was still okay so i tested like a second video which actually ended up performing much better and on the second video it was more of like hitting them based off like their i was i was, why did it perform better i think because like the second video it was more engaging you know the first um clip of the video it showed like a baby girl like a, like a little girl just like um laughing just, ah, 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 and then i think that's what really um attracted the attention of the parents but moving on so this is like basically the fa facebook ad strategy that i use i i started testing at six dollars per day quite like normal and the video that was around 45 to 50 seconds and i ran it at purchase event so i always 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 run purchase even i always like tell other people to like, you know always run purchase event there's no point doing view content at cut or anything else because what you want is, you know, people who are purchasers and you want to tell Facebook that, you know, yeah, you want people who are purchasers. Even if you have no bits of data, you still want to run in a purchase because there's no point running anything besides purchase unless your goal is not for people to buy on the website, which is probably not. So if your goal is to be, uh, if your goal is for people to buy on your website, then you want to run in at um, purchase conversion event and autom automatic placements. So I let Facebook de decide whether they want to place you on Instagram or on Facebook newsfeed or on anything else. And most of the time it's on Facebook news feed and on um, Instagram feed as well. So we had, uh, I think the Instagram news feed, we had like, over a million um, views. It was working quite well. So seven days click was one day view. We had like five different audiences. And I targeted like, you know, fairy, Disney brand, princess, doll, Barbie. And this like um, other audience called Fisher Price, which was like kind of like, uh, it's all related to like kids, toys, and you know, like fairy and stuff like that. So you can see how it all makes sense as to why the audiences were working so well. Three different country segment. The top six, which is the United States, United Kingdom, Australia, New Zealand, Ireland, Canada, and the top 20, as you can see it right there. And worldwide, excluding the um, high fraud countries within India, Vietnam, Indonesia, Africa, Bangladesh, and the top six and the top 20. And you know, if you guys want to remember this and use it for yourself, you can just kind of like take a screenshot and you know, you guys can just use it. It's fine. And that's how I actually I'm still testing with this a method now with this as well, so you can use it. So why did it so so well? So I think it's because it was the fourth quarter and parents are looking to buy this for their children for Christmas. And surprisingly, you know, there was actually no one selling the product during that point of time. So this product was actually killing it in 2017, I believe. Like 2017, it was like a seven-figure product. And in 2018 of the fourth quarter, no one was selling it. So the reason why I was able to go in and make it work because I think like, you know, no one was selling it and people are willing to buy more than one. So the AOV is really high and I can scale it like really fast and without worrying about ad spend. It is a viral product with a wow effect because this like fairy doll can fly and it's like, and so, you know, I think like people, um, parents really, uh, were really uh, hooked by that. So the mindset shift with, which helped me along the way is, is just like, you know, basically going from um, firstly, it's just going from scarcity to, scarcity to abundance and just not being afraid to spend more on ads because you know one of the limiting things I believe I had in the past was I was afraid to spend on ads and I was afraid that you know if I say like if I spend too much on I was afraid to scale basically I knew that the product had potential but I, I wasn't afraid to I wasn't I was kind of like scared of to like kind of like scale beyond a certain point so this time you know I had this um, winning product and I was like cool I want to take this to 20k per day so uh, I just like you know tried to um, pump in more budget like created more like you know um, CBO campaigns and scale it with like it made a bit of sets and all sorts of you know ways of scaling and I just you know got it to 20k per day so it's really realizing that you know okay you know this is a product that is winning I want to make as much money out of this one as possible so I'm gonna like put in more money and secondly is you know realizing that there are so many you know buyers in the world and i remember you know i started seeing that like, people were stealing my ads and even nowadays you know there are so many people who are stealing my ads but then it's like you know when you're in the abundant abundant mindset you know that it's okay people are stealing your ads because 
you know that there are just like so many unbiased in the world you know in like us there's like 200 million people on facebook so i'm not worried that you know be, i'm not worried that there's gonna be not enough um people to buy my product so just you know realizing that a lot of bias and will help you help helps you get rid of like the scarcity and like mindset as well and be willing to skill fast when i sense that it's a winner so like, i remember for this product i was kind of like ballsy so when I found out it's a winner, I started scaling really, really hard. And I went from, I think, like 1K per day to like 10K per day within like, I, probably around like um one week or something. It was really, really fast. After I, you know, I contacted my new supplier and that's when I was able to um ship out with like the US Fulfillment Center, but apparently it took a very, very long time. So <clears throat> it took me around um one week to scale from, I think, like 1K to like 5, 10K per day. You know, so I was really like scaling super, super hard with this one. Don't be afraid to lose money when you're testing products. So when you test product, it's really natural to kind of like lose money and see your bank account drop. But then don't be worried, don't be so scared because when you find a winner, you can actually make a lot more money than what you actually lost. So say, you know, if you spend like on um, like a stretch, like $3,000 to find a winning product. But if say the winning product is going to make you $30,000 in profit, you're, you probably don't, you, you probably wouldn't really mind spending $3,000 again to make back $30,000 again, right? So that's the same thing with like dropshipping. It's all like a numbers game. You want to test as much as possible, as quickly as possible to find a winning product. Because the winning product will, will make you like a lot more money than what you actually like invested initially in. So overall, what I learned is, you know, don't be disheartened when you struggle to find a winner. And I know that a lot of beginners, you know, when it's, you won't trust me, you know, we all been there when you first started and you can't find any winner for like, you know, for like God's sake, it, feel, it just feels like everything is against you. But it's okay, don't be disheartened when you struggle to find a minimum. Just keep like pushing on and pushing on. And trust me, you know, eventually you'll see the light. Eventually something will just click if you are doing the things right, of course. Find a supplier which can fulfill fast. And ideally, you want to move up from AliExpress when you start scaling. Because I find that with AliExpress, there's just like so many issues. Especially, you know, sometimes you just like close your orders and the suppliers don't ship out your orders. And especially the one with like the closed orders. So, you know, sometimes AliExpress, when you just pay for them, like after one or two days or something, they'll just close all the orders and you know you have to reorder them again on aliexpress and it's just like a mess so i recommend to move out of aliexpress as soon as possible so you're gonna definitely you wanna use like fulfillment centers when you're trying to scale really hard or just like a faster shipping line because you know if you when you use e packet and you know like um the processing time and everything else it could take like up to like three to four weeks and sometimes three to four weeks is a little bit too long for customers to wait so if you if you use like a faster shipping line and your supply is able to ship out really far um faster the product might arrive in just like you know five to ten days and five to ten days is not it's like a really really good time and it really like separates you out from the other drop shippers make sure you have enough capital to pay for seven days of ads and cost of goods so i talk about scaling really fast but if you don't have enough like money in the bank then you don't really want to scale that fast as well so i ideally i recommend you to have at least like seven days um of um of in seven days worth of capital enough to pay for your ads and cost of goods because that's what because you know if you are living in singapore and like an uh, international seller like me what you'll find is with stripe and with paypal sometimes it takes up to like five to seven days for them to uh, reimburse the money back so having enough capital to pay for you know seven days of cost of goods and ads it's really gonna um be safe for you so that you don't end up you know having like negative sum of money in your bank account and you no know, bow of like um goods that you need to fulfill because you spend all of that or something like that so you want to make sure that um you always have like a safe enough money of capital in your bank before you scale hard so the fifth thing that you can do is to test landing pages to increase aov and to test more videos as well so the first mistake which i uh, made when i was scaling this product was i didn't test enough videos the first video was working really, really well, so I just continued to ah, this is a video because it's working so well. But later, yeah, I know, you know, I when I tested the second video, it actually worked a lot better. So ideally, you want to test different videos at with um different marketing angles. So one video can show that like the, you know a pain point. The second video you can show like the wow effect. Third video you can use like a social proof at the start or something like that. So anyway, just like different angles to capture the audience, the attention of the audience, and see which one perform the best. Landing pages as well to increase the AOV because with landing pages you can like sell in bundles of four instead of just like one pieces and this will really help you increase the AOV and it double my AOV for like a product that are that I'm selling. So landing pages is good as well. And that's it guys, you know that's all is it all? Yep, that's all for this video. And I hope you guys um like it. If you guys got any questions, make sure to leave it in the comments below. 
Um, you guys need any help, anything, just um, you shoot me a message on Instagram at gary.lwq and make sure to hit, hit, a, hit a like and subscribe. See you guys. Thank <laughs> you.